Hey everybody, Brad Greenfield here again for another Excel 2013 training and in this video we're going to cover moving, copying, and inserting uh, data that's already existing in our data set and also some uh, brief finding and replacing uh, items in our data set. So here we've got three different data sets just with some arbitrary numbers that I just threw together, 4-H uh, County project meeting numbers, some camp numbers, and then some field day numbers. And again, these numbers are all made up. Uh, I just threw them in here so that we would have a starting point and something to work with. So when we talk about moving information, uh, there's there may be various situations in, that cause you to want to move data that you've already put into an Excel uh, worksheet. Um, you know, as you work in Excel, you're going to you're going to want to do things for whatever reason, and it's you know too too many options to really explain here. So we're just going to look at moving some of this data. So let's say, for example, that I have this these camp numbers, and I want to move it up closer uh, to this project meeting numbers for whatever reason. So if I highlight, if I click to highlight this whole data set here and I mouse over the edge you can see that my cursor my plus symbol whatever you want to call that becomes a crosshair okay or a directional crosshair if, if you will now if I just right click and drag I can drop this anywhere okay I can move it up here if I wanted to I could move it down here if I wanted to I could actually have it mouse over here and have the table go all the way over as far as I wanted to drop that table right there. But I'm going to click undo to get it back to where I wanted it to go. I've got to click undo a couple times to get it back where we started. So that's a quick and easy way to just move that information. And notice down here at the bottom I have these formulas. So it's adding, these formulas are just adding all of these um, columns here or, or just, just this information. So these total rows are totaling up these numbers that are in this camp uh, data set. As I move this uh, data set here, wherever I move it, those formulas will stay, will hold true. So now it's adding um, B4, or sorry, O4 through O6. And if I look at the formula, we'll see O4 through O6. Okay, so anywhere I move this data set, those formulas are going to recognize it was moved, recognize what it's supposed to be adding for me, and keep that exactly the same. So that's a, that's a really neat tool that we can move that information around with. Now, we don't have to move complete data sets. Let's say that I needed, for whatever reason, to highlight just this this set here, uh, this Ridley, these Ridley numbers. And again, when I mouse over the edge, I get the crosshair, or the directional crosshairs, and I can move that completely out. And when I do that, the the rows or the cells are left blank there, but the formula recognizing, okay, there's no numbers here now, so it adjusts to only add these two numbers. So I was able to move that data set out of this, or move that that row of cells out of this data set completely. Let's say for another reason that we needed the Clyde Austin uh, camp to be first instead of the Ridley. Okay, so I will highlight uh, that Clyde Austin, those Clyde Austin cells, and when I mouse over the edge, I am going to select the shift, or I'm going to press the shift button and right click. And when I do that, you can see that as I move that little that thick green line becomes sorry I lost my when I move that that thick thick green line indicates where it's gonna drop that set of cells for me so if I with that thick green line there and I release it it's gonna drop it right there so everything holds true the numbers are still adding we can see there um, well, my, my formula got off a little bit, so I will change that back to a B12. And so it'll add all of that, and I'll drag that across so that my formulas stay true. And we can see that that happened. So again, I could, I could highlight this set of cells and do a shift and drag it. Do a shift and drag it up drop it and our and because I'm inside that data set I didn't have to redo what happened before was when I added it up here it set it outside of the data set so you have to be aware of that if you go to the very top it can set it outside of the data set and you may have to adjust your formulas but if I'm moving stuff within the data set then I don't have to adjust anything again just shift and then dropping it right there and it moves it around for me 
So that's a easy way that you can realign the data that you have and I could do that if I wanted to with um, columns as well. So if I did a shift I could move April over here in between May and June if I wanted to do that for whatever reason. So you can move stuff around like that. Now let's say that there were some formulas or some, some work that I wanted to do with this camp number data set that I wasn't too sure of. I'm pretty happy with the way that this is right now, but I really want to try a couple things. But I don't want to try it on my original. So there may be a situation where I want to duplicate this data set so that I can play with it and try some different things without messing up my original. If I wanted to do that, when I mouse over the edge, if I press the control button, you can see that my cursor has a little plus beside it. Uh, you may not be able to see it on the video, but as I mouse over and I hit the control button and I drag this, you can kind of see that plus symbol. And when I drop it, and when I drop it, I'm going to let go of the mouse button first so that it, if I let go of the control button first, it would mess up. So let go of the mouse button first. And now I have an exact duplicate of this data set all the way down to the formulas. The formulas hold true. I could also, I could do it again if I wanted to. If I wanted to copy it again and move it up here, let go of the mouse button first, and then let go of the shift button, and I get another uh, exact duplicate of these of this original table or lit original data set there. So that's a, a nice way that we can try to duplicate and remove stuff, you know, and you could even, if you needed, let's say, for whatever reason, we needed to have two of the Clyde Austin um, rows inside of this data set. I could do a control and drag it down and of course that replaces my um, my formula row there so you have to be aware of that. That's one thing that that can trip you up from time to time. If I again just to give you an example if I clicked on this Ridley and I did a control and I drag it down and I drop it it's going to replace whatever I drop it on top of. So be aware of that. That could, that could trip you up a little bit. So that's a nice way that we can move some information, duplicate it, um, insert some additional or, or insert you know, rows in different order, uh, however we want to do it. And we did all that without disrupting the data set around it. We were able to move all that without disrupting anything around it. So let's get into the find and select. And there's this find and select up here in the right hand corner. Uh, and I'm in the home tab on Excel. If I click on that, you're going to see you got several options here. But we're just going to do uh, some simple find and replace. So I will click on find. Let me drag this over here. And when I first open the find and replace tab, it's a very simple. You know, I can type in here. I'm just going to type in Clyde and click find next. Well, I have to unhighlight. See, it said it didn't find anything because I had this set of cells highlighted. I'm going to click to unhighlight those and now click find. And as I click find next, it's going to go back and forth between my row 12 and row 14 because those are the two cells that have Clyde in it. Now, if I clicked, let's say that I highlighted this field days data set here and then wanted to find Clyde, it's going to give me the, the errors, or not the error, but saying, hey, we didn't find what you're looking for because it's trying to look exactly inside of what I have highlighted. If I don't have anything highlighted, it's going to find it on the worksheet. Okay, so that's a nice way that we can find. So let's say that we wanted to do some more options here. So when I click the Options tab to expand it, I can have it search within the sheet, search by rows, look into formulas, however I wanted to do that. Okay, There's several options you can do here, but some of the most common we're going to do is matching case. So if I have the match case box selected, it's still going to find those two options. But if I change that uppercase C to a lowercase C, it's not going to find anything because none of, none, neither one of those instances of Clyde are in lowercase. So I'll click OK and then I'll back it up and change that back to a capital. Now let's do match entire cell contents. And again, it's not, and I'm going to uncheck match case. It's not going to find anything because there are no cells that simply have the word Clyde in it. it. Either has Clyde York or Clyde Austin. And doing this in a small data set like this is kind of silly, but you would get the idea if you had a really long spreadsheet filled with information. So I'm going to type in Clyde Austin. With the match entire cell contents checked, I'll click Find Next. And it's only going to find that one instance. 
okay, because I have it finding exactly what's written here. Now let's say, for example, that you have a long sheet of, or a long uh, list of, of data, <clears throat> and you've used some, some um, fill, you've, you've filled some cells with different colors, and you want to find some, not only words that match exactly, and I'm going to take out Austin and uncheck this uh, match entire cell. So let's say that we had some formatting done. We had filled some cells, for example, with a color. And I'm going to I'm going to fill or just show you here with just Clyde in there, and I click Find Next. It's going to find those two instances just like before. But I'm going to click on Clyde Austin, and I am going to have it fill with this dark red color. Okay. So what I could do now is if I just have it finding Clyde, it's still going to find both of those even though I have used some formatting because I have no format set. There's two different ways that I can look through uh, the, the formatting to find Clyde with specific formatting. If I click the drop down, I can click on choose from choose format from cell and it's going to give me a little eyedropper and I'm going to click on that red eye or that red fill right there. So it's giving me a preview. So it's going to find all instances of Clyde that are filled with that red color. And I click Find Next, it's only going to find that one, okay? I can also click on, I'm going to clear for the formatting. You can also go into Format, and I can go into, I could pick all kinds of different stuff to look for here, but since we're using Fill as an option, I'm going to go into Fill and say Find All of the instances of Clyde with that red cell, just like what I did with that eyedropper, but this time I kind of manually set it. I click Find Next, and it's still just going to find that one for me. Okay, so now we're going to look into finding and replacing. Let's say that the, if I click on Replace, I just get another, another box here that I can type information. So let's say that the Clyde Austin Center changed names to XYZ. Okay, so with all of the, um, and I'll type XYZ in, so it's going to look through all of the spreadsheet with the instances of Clyde with a fill of this dark red, and it's going to replace it with XYZ, and I could even go in and click on Format and have it replace it with a blue color if I wanted to. So I could have it Find Next, and it's going to find that one, and I could have it replace, or I could click Replace All, and it's going to say, hey, all done, we made one replacement. And we can see here that our XYZ uh, Austin with a blue background replaced the Clyde with the red background. So, again, doing it with this small data set is kind of silly, but as you had a if you had a large data set and you were looking for different things, that would be a really neat way to, um, or a really easy way to look through a data sheet or a spreadsheet quickly and find what you were looking for. So that'll do it for moving, copying, inserting, and finding and replacing cells. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and we'll have some more Excel 2013 training coming soon.